Okay, here's a lesson on how to use sine, cos, and tan to find missing side lengths um, of a right angle triangle. Remember, um, sine, cos, and tan um, are the three primary trigonometric ratios that only work for right angle triangles. Okay? So what we discovered last lesson was that each angle has its own unique sine, cos, and tan ratio that never, ever changes. Okay? Um, before I explain what those ratios are, first of all, if um, angle theta is our reference angle, we have to be able to label our triangle, we have to be able to label the opposite side, the side opposite of the angle. So opposite of theta is over here. Adjacent to theta is the side right beside the angle. And the hypotenuse is always the side opposite the right angle. And it's always the longest side. Okay. So um, the sine ratio, okay, sine of theta, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. That's the sine ratio. Okay. The cosine ratio, right here, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay. And then tan of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent, the side opposite theta over the side adjacent to theta, okay? So we discovered that um, we can use these ratios because every triangle, every right angle triangle that has um, a reference angle of theta um, has a unique ratio. Okay? Because every other right angle triangle with that same angle, reference angle, is similar. Therefore, it, the ratio of the opposite of hypotenuse for all triangles with the same reference angle, all right angle triangles with that same reference, ang reference angle, um, have the exact same ratio of opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, and opposite over adjacent. They have three unique ratios um, that we can use to help us solve for missing side lengths and missing angles. Okay, today we're just going to use them to find missing side lengths. Oh, and also one more thing just to point out. Um, we use the acronym SOKATOA to help us remember these ratios. So, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Ka, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And TOA, tan is opposite over adjacent. Okay. One other thing we have to know how to do, um, we have to know how to label a triangle. Okay, using uh, using letters. So angles get capital letters, and the side opposite the angle um, is labeled with the corresponding lowercase letter. Okay, so here's angle A. The side opposite angle A is labeled with a lowercase a. Angle B, opposite angle B, the side gets labeled with a lowercase b. And same thing with C. Okay, so let's practice using trig ratios to find side lengths. So this is asking us to find the side length of B. First of all, where is the side length of B? We know if angle B is here, okay, angle B is here, we know if side B is opposite the angle B. So side B is right here, okay? Good. So in order to figure out what ratio we're going to use to find this, let's just first figure out Let's label our triangle um, with our opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always across from the right angle, so this is our hypotenuse. Um, if this is our reference angle here, side B is opposite, and side A is adjacent. Side A, because it's across from angle A. Okay, so I've labeled this triangle opposite adjacent hypotenuse based on our reference angle here of 40. Okay. This is our reference angle because this is the one that it gives us the angle for. Okay. Technically, I do know this angle as well. This is 50 because these three angles have to add um, to 180. And I could use this as my reference angle. Okay. Um, then I just use a different trig ratio to find out my, my side B. Okay. But we're going to use, since it already gave us B here, angle 40, we'll use that as our reference angle. So that's our reference angle. We're interested in finding out the opposite side, and we know the hypotenuse. So we need to find what ratio has the opposite and the hypotenuse involved. Okay, opposite and hypotenuse—that's the sine ratio. 
Okay, so let's use the sine ratio. We know that the sine of theta, theta is 40 in this case, we know the sine of 40 must have a ratio of b over 8. Okay, so the sine of 40, there is a unique ratio for that. Okay, let me just bring up my calculator here just so I can show you what that unique ratio is. So, bring my calculator. I should have done this earlier. Sorry about that. All right, here we go. Okay, so I know um, sine of 40, there's a unique sine ratio for all right angle triangles with a reference angle of 40. I'm just going to make sure that my calculator is on degrees, and it's not, so let's put it on degrees. Always do that. Okay. So my sine of 40, I know all right angle triangles should have a ratio of their opposite over hypotenuse. It should be roughly 0 0.64. So I know um, sine of 40, the ratio should be 0 0.64 of the opposite over hypotenuse. So b over 8 should equal 0 0.64. So now that I can solve this, I have an equation with one variable. I just have to isolate b. So I have b divided by 8 on this side to get b by itself. I move, when I move to the other side, I have to do the opposite of division. So I'm going to be multiplying on the other side. So I'm going to have 8 times 0 0.64 on the other side equals b. Okay? Put that in on your calculator. So I'm going to multiply this by 8. Answer times 8. And I get 5.1. Okay, so B. B is equal to 5.1. I don't think I stated any units. No, the question didn't have any units. Okay, so 5.1, we know B. We now know the exact value of B. It is 5.1. One. We've solved that question. That's all there is to it. Okay. You won't have to show this intermediate step all the time. You could just press on your calculator eight times sine forty. Okay. You don't have to show the the value of sine forty each time. Okay. Okay. Let's do another example. Find x. Okay. So it's asking us to find this variable x here. Um. Let's first label our triangle with uh, the opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Okay, here's our reference angle right here, the one it gives us. So um, the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. Um, opposite to 30 is over here. Adjacent to 30 is right here. Okay, well, this, this should be angled. This should be labeled angle C. I labeled this A and B. I forgot to label that angle C. Okay, so angle C is our reference angle. Opposite, adjacent, right beside it, hypotenuse, uh, the side across from the right angle. Okay, so what do we know? Okay, we know um, the adjacent side, and we're interested in the hypotenuse. So what ratio has adjacent and hypotenuse? The cosine ratio has adjacent and hypotenuse. So we are going to use the cosine ratio to help us um, solve for this angle. So we know that the cosine of theta of the angle, angle is 30, so the cosine of 30 should be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so 20 over x. Okay, so I have an equation with one variable. I can solve that. Okay, all I do is get x by itself. So I'm going to, x is on the bottom of the fraction here. That doesn't really help us. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to get rid of this fraction by multiplying this side by x and then equivalently multiplying this side by x. So getting x to the other side by multiplying by x. So I have x times cos 30 equals 20. And now I want to get x by itself. So I have x times cos 30 on this side. So to get cos 30 to the other side, I divide it. So I'm going to have x equals 20 divided by cos 30. Okay. So I can just put that on my calculator and find out what x is equal to. So 20 
divided by cos 30 equals 23.1. 23.1. Okay. Um, so you don't have to show these all of these steps every time. You can see at cos 30 equals 20 over x. And when I do a bunch of rearranging, this cos 30 and this x just end up switching spots. Okay. So the x ends up on this side and the cos 30 ends up on the bottom of the fraction. So you can just follow that pattern from now on when you do um, when you do questions like this where your variable is on the bottom of the fraction. Okay. So you can just switch the x and the cos 30. Okay. Um, and this is algebraically why you're, why you're able to do that. Okay. So x is 23.1. Just always go ahead and actually on your triangle label that. That way um, it's easy for me to see your answer and give you the marks for it. Okay. 23.1. Awesome. Okay. Let's do another example. Um, we've done one with the sine ratio and with the cosine ratio. What do you think we'll do for this one? Hmm. Okay. So find x. Our reference angle is over here. Okay. Uh, angle of 15. Let's label the adjacent opposite hypotenuse. Here's my right angle here. So my hypotenuse is across from that. So here's my hypotenuse. Opposite to 15 is over here. Adjacent to 15 is right here. Okay, so I have the adjacent side and I'm interested in the opposite side. Which ratio has opposite and adjacent? The tan ratio. The only one we haven't used yet. Okay, so I know that the tan of an angle, so the tan of 15, has a unique ratio. Okay, and that unique ratio is x over 3.8. The unique ratio of tan 15, tan of 15, is equal to 0 point, 0 0.27 approximately. Okay, So x over 3.8 should be equal to about 0 0.27. Okay, So how we're going to solve for x, we need to get it by itself. So we have x divided by 3.8 on this side. To get 3.8 to the other side, we must multiply it. So 3.8 times tan 15, which we know is about 0 0.67. Okay, but I'm not going to round it yet, my tan, but my tan of 15 value, because I want my answer to be as exact as possible. So I'm actually instead of putting in 3.8 times 0 0.67, I'm actually going to put in 3.8 times tan of 15. That way my calculator doesn't round anything, so I get an exact, exact answer. I get 1.018. Okay? So that is, um, you know, I'll, I'll round my final answer. Okay? It's fine, to round, it's fine to round your final answer. Just try not to round anything before you get to your final answer. That way it's precise. Okay? I'll round it to the nearest hundredth. So 1.02. Okay, so that's how you use um, the tan ratio to find a missing angle. So we've done an example for each of the ratios, actually, sine, cos, and tan. So I know x is 1.02. Ooh, I wrote that very terribly. Now it's right, it's super neat. 1.02 is x. Okay, one more example. Let's solve a triangle. 